here I will be discussing a case of systemic lupus erythematosus. Systemic lupus erythematosus is one disease which is very often missed at the level of primary care practice. It is very common presentation, it is very common disease nowadays but the presentation of systemic lupus erythematosus is very varied. SLE is very varied. So often we tend to miss at the primary care level. It presents as we all know it is a vasculitic disease and it presents it has a varied presentation and there are certain criteria uh, to diagnose SLE and lupus nephritis is one of the very most common presentation of SLE. Around 40 to 50 percent of patients of SLE have got some form of kidney disease. That is, there are various staging ISN RPS classification of SLE lupus nephritis. But then let us not go much uh, deeper into the classification. But as of now, we'll see what how this lady, particular lady, presented. So I'll just uh, ask a few questions to this lady. So we'll know what happened at the primary care level. Amanyo, tondri yavagin the start ayto. We shall now discuss with the patient at, as to what happened at the primary care level. August lintu start agit sir. First to bhav bantri sir kai kalu vatti alla bhav bantri sir daspet liko di tarad dante andri sir. Amelo an tinglo apat thogi indra sir kidney bhav bantri sir santip sir kade bantri sir. Illin tera start mar kora bantri sir aushadi. So, uh, how it all started was she first developed pedal edema, facial puffiness. Uh, at that point of time, at the primary care level, rightly it, uh, her uh, thyroid evaluation was done. Uh, being a female, her thyroid uh, tests were done. And uh, she had hypothyroidism. TSH was more than 60 when it was evaluated. So, she was initiated on thyroid medicines and on uh, thyronorm at uh, 100 mcg per day. So, after she started taking medicines, her pedal edema kept on increasing. Although Rightly, thyroid treatment was started, but um, after a period of about one and a half month, her creatinine at the point of evaluation was around 1.3 when she first presented to the uh, primary care practitioner. After about a month and a half, her pedal edema kept on increasing. They kept on going back to the primary care practitioner and there uh, they were convinced that, that the primary care practitioner convinced them that it is thyroid and it takes certain time to resolve. So whatever had been done till now was right. But what was missed at that point was urine routine again. Urine routine which was done at the point at that point of time initially uh, when she presented it had around 4 plus of protein urea 25 to 50 RBCs per hyperfluid and her creatinine was 1.3 at the time of first presentation in the month of August. So later after, uh, after a month and a half when she presented again in between meanwhile they kept on uh, going to the primary care practitioner three or four times but uh, when her pedal edema kept on increasing but it, the urine routine which was done at that point of time which it was ignored. So later she was referred here when her creatinine had gone up to three when she presented to a nephrologist her creatinine was three and uh, she was almost oligoaneuric at that point of presentation. She had to be initiated on dialysis. Uh, at that point, a renal biopsy was done which showed class 4 active lupus nephritis with crescents. The point which I want to make with this particular uh, patient is that urine routine again which is being missed, uh, which is being done at every, uh, at any primary care practitioner level which had proteinuria and RBCs. So, presence of proteinuria and RBCs, she had hypertension when she presented to, to nephrologist to me in my clinic. Her blood pressure was around 200 to 200 by 130. So, this was her uh, blood pressure when she presented. So, putting all these things together, e even when she pre first presented at the primary care level, her blood pressure was also on the higher side and she was told that because of hypothyroidism, her blood pressure has gone up. She was started on antihypertensives, she was started on uh, thyroid medications. All this was good till then. Putting everything uh, together, she had urine proteinuria, she had RBCs in the urine, she had hypertension. So everything fits into glomerular disease. It is a nephritic disease. So she presented in RPRF, RP rapidly progressive renal failure. So, and then among RPRF, it was RPGN, rapidly progressive renal uh, the glomerulonephritis. So, this is what she presented with. She was initiated on dialysis, various other investigations were done. What are the things you need to do when a patient presents with RPRF is that we need to get a complement levels done. C3, C4 levels have to be done. ANA, NTDS, ANA, 
that is workup for lupus. So we have to rule out whether it is an immunological or non-immunological disease. So uh, basic tests which have to be done are complement level C3, C4, SI and then we need to get a ANC level, ANCA levels that is uh, PNK and CNK and then ANA, NTDS, ANA, ANA profile has to be done. These are the basic things which we need to get done immediately as soon as we see a patient of RPRF or RPGN uh, in, in whatever way they present us. So at that point of presentation, her creatinine was 3 when she presented. So she was and she was oligoaneuric, she was in pulmonary edema, she had accelerated hypertension. So everything fitting into glomelonephritis. It was a glomelon case of glomelonephritis, nephritis. So renal biopsy again confirmed our diagnosis of um, uh, lupus nephritis, class 4 lupus nephritis. ANA, NTDS, TNA levels which were sent were all positive. Her complement C3 levels were low and C4 levels uh, were also on the lower side. What is SLE? SLE can present, it is a, basically it is one of the kind of autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease is nothing but where our body starts producing antibodies against our own uh, body. So in simple terms. So our body starts attacking our own body. SLE in, uh, is a kind of vasculitic disease where, autoimmune disease where here the antibodies which are produced in the body affect can affect any part of our organ system. So it can affect the lungs, it can affect the heart, liver, kidney. Kidneys are one of the most common way in which a patient can present. Even hematological manifestations can be there, psychiatric manifestations can be there, neurological manifestations can be there. So all these, they can present to you in any way, but majority of uh, SLE patients also have got urine routine abnormalities because around 40 to 50 percent of patients with SLE can have uh, lupus nephritis kidney may be involved in a case of lupus nephritis so this is one point which we need to remember when we are always we should have a high index of suspicion when we start seeing multiple organ system involvement there are various cases where maybe uh, if we can demonstrate if we can get a, a, that patient which we have on follow up she uh, there was one more patient who presented in a dengue season with fever and thrombocytopenia initially even we treated it as dengue and then later when thrombocytopenia persisted, she was treated as ITP and later at some point of time she was dying, uh, when uh, she had developed pancytopenia. Going back we found that she used to have proteinuria, then uh, uh, SLE was considered. So SLE is one kind of disease where again as I would like to repeat multi organ systems are involved. There are newer classification criteria for that. But the most common which we uh, used to read during our, our undergraduate levels and postgraduate levels are simple criteria that malar rash, discoid rashes, photosensitivity, oral ulcers, they can present to, uh, with oral ulcers, hematological manifestations, pancytopenia they can present as, involvement of kidneys where there is either increased creatinine in urine showing proteinuria, RBCs in the urine. Psychiatric manifestation, there are very typical patients where they have got psychiatric manifestations alone they can present with psychiatric manifestation, CNS involvement, it could be stroke in young or uh, cerebellar involvement, there are so many ways in, in uh, CNS manifestations. So these are the ways in which a patient of SLA can present and urine routine which we do on a routine practice should not be missed. So this lady, coming back to this lady, she presented with a generalized edema, you can say, her thyroid evaluation was done rightly by a primary care practitioner. She had hypothyroidism, treated for hypothyroidism. She had hypertension. So antihypertensives were started. But what was missed, although now uh, after initiating her on treatment, treating for crescentic glomerulonephritis, she is doing quite fine now. She has been on immunosuppressive medication. She could not tolerate cyclophosphamide, so uh, kept her on um, mycophenolate mofetil. Although she is doing fine, but we could have missed her. She may, she would have become much more worse if we had missed her diagnosis, if it was a bit late when she had presented. Although she was in oligoanuria, dialysis was initiated, now she is off dialysis now. So here the primary care practitioner, rightly he started on antihypertensives, he started her on uh, thyroid medications. But what was missed was presence of proteinuria in the urine, very simple test like urine routine which was missed. Urine had proteinuria, urine had RBCs at that point of time. She had hypertension. If these all were put together, it would have been very easily, uh, it would have been, uh, he would have understood that it was a glomerular disease. 
So just putting all the points together, we will get to know that this is a glomerular disease. So whenever there is a glomerular disease and when there is a presentation like nephritis, when there are RBCs in the urine, there is a possibility that nephritis can rapidly progress leading on to inflammation, uh, leading on to rapid progression and they can go into renal failure oligonuria. So whenever a case of RPGN comes to you or whenever a patient of acute glomerulonephritis comes to you, we should always make sure we evaluate the patient thoroughly. Urine routine is a very important diagnostic test which should not be missed and routine evaluation with complements have to be done, complements C3, C4 levels have to be done. Apart from that ANA, NTDS, ANA, ANCA levels, NTGBM, all these anti-GBM anti antibodies, all these gamut of investigations have to be done. If not, if uh, for example where I practice small district place where we may not be able to do all the investigations at the point of uh, arrival of the patient but definitely renal biopsy costs much lesser than uh, uh, getting uh, uh, all these uh, anti auto antibody levels done or complement levels done at my place of practice. So what I tend to do is directly go for a renal biopsy and then based on the renal biopsy finding then we get a particular investigation done like if we find that it is SLE uh, full house on uh, immunofluorescence then I get the ANA profile done if at all it is required. So in this way here the points to be noted missed diagnosis, missed diagnosis of SLE, SLE might have been missed but at least glomerular disease has to be suspected when she first presented. Although SLE is a very common condition, it is often missed. So, a number of SLE patients go unnoticed and then they progress later and they present to us in a stage where it is not reversible. Not every time you will find malar rash, discoid rash, photosensitivity. It is not always you will find all these findings in one patient of SLE. So, any presence of even renal involvement, they can present to you and this you will have to have a high index of suspicion whenever you see a patient of RPGN. Thank you.